from history. Welcome to Weirdos from History, where we dust off the annals of antiquity to bring you tales of the peculiar, the bizarre, and the downright dandy. Today, we were diving into the decadent life of Luisa Cassati, a woman who turned eccentricity into an art form and made the world her stage quite literally. So, buckle up as we embark on a journey through the life of history's ultimate diva, a muse who amused and bemused in equal measure. Born Luisa Adele Rosa Maria Ammon on January 23rd, 1881 in Milan, Italy, our protagonist entered the world with a silver spoon in her mouth, which she promptly used to stir up trouble. The daughter of a textile tycoon, she was swaddled in silk and cradled in cashmere, setting the stage for a life less ordinary. Tragedy struck early, however, with Luisa's mother departing this mortal coil when Luisa was just a teenager, followed by her father two years later. Orphaned but outrageously wealthy, Luisa and her sister Francesca became the Kardashians of their day, minus the reality TV show, but with all the drama. In 1900, the tender age of 19, Luisa tied the knot with Camillo, the Marquess Cassati Stampa di Soncino, in a marriage that was less about romance and more about real estate. The couple had a daughter, Christina, but domestic bliss was not on Luisa's agenda. By 1910, Luisa had transformed the Palazzo Venier dei Leoni in Venice into her personal playground, a place where the parties were as wild as the wildlife she kept. Yes, dear listeners, while you might have a cat or a dog, Luisa preferred cheetahs on leashes and snakes as necklaces. Talk about living on the edge. Her soirees were legendary, a veritable who's who of the avant-garde. Artists, writers and aristocrats flocked to her side, drawn by the gravitational pull of her eccentricity. Luisa didn't just attend parties, she was the party. But what's a muse without her artists? Luisa became the patron saint of the peculiar, inspiring the likes of Giovanni Boldini, Man Ray and Jean Cocteau. Her face was immortalized in paint, her essence captured in sculpture, her spirit distilled in poetry. She was art personified. Her love life, too, was a masterpiece of complexity. Her affair with the poet Gabriele D'Annunzio was the stuff of legend, a tumultuous tango that left both participants breathless and the public scandalized. Luisa was not one for half measures. By the 1920s, Luisa's penchant for the theatrical had reached new heights or perhaps depths. She was known to stroll through Venice at night, her pet cheetahs in tow, wearing nothing but a fur coat, because why not? Her wardrobe was a wonder to behold, a riot of feathers, furs and fabric that would make even the most jaded fashionista weep with envy. Louisa didn't just dress to impress, she dressed to depress anyone who thought they had a chance of outshining her. But alas, all good things must come to an end. By 1930, Louisa's extravagant lifestyle had caught up with her, leaving her in debt to the tune of $25 million. The party was over, but the legend lived on. Louisa spent her final years in London, a shadow of her former self, but no less fascinating. She passed away on June 1st, 1957, leaving behind a legacy of lavishness, a blueprint for bohemianism, and a cautionary tale of what happens when you live life with the volume turned all the way up. And so, dear viewers, we bid adieu to Luisa Cassati, a woman who danced on the edge of decency, draped in decadence and drenched in drama. If you've enjoyed this foray into the fabulous life of history's most extravagant eccentric, do hit the like button, subscribe for more tales of historical hijinks, and leave a comment with your thoughts or suggestions for future episodes. Until next time, keep it weird, keep it witty, and keep watching Weirdos from History.